This week's lesson deals with evidence associated with evolution. The first two terms that we're going to be looking at are homologous structures and analogous structures. Homologous structures are going to be these structures located to the left of the PowerPoint. These are going to be structures that have similar evolution but different functions. What we mean by that is that this is the bones of an arm. So it contains a humerus, an ulna, radius, and carpal bones or, or wrist bones. We see that across all different organisms. So lizards, cats, whales, bats, they have that similar humerus, radius, ulna, and carpal bone structure. What's different about them is what we use for their function. So humans use their arm bone for very, very specialized things like riding and grabbing small objects. Lizards may use their arm bone for digging and climbing, cats for jumping, whales for swimming, bats for flying, so on and so forth. Now, analogous structures do with structures that have evolved separately, but they have similar function. So in other words, these organisms all develop flight, but they evolve flight in a different way. Even their structures are different as well, based off of this picture. So one difference that we see between homologous and, and analogous structures are the selective pressures. Homologous structures have different selective pressure. That's why there's a need to have different functions. Whereas the selective pressures for these organisms are all the same. That's why it's necessary to, de to develop that flight. The other term that we're going to be talking about is vestigial organs. These are organs that serve no useful function in an organism. So going back to the example of a star-nosed mole, the star-nosed mole has a very, very reduced uh, they have re very, very reduced sight. So they have very, very reduced eyes. So in this case, you can see that those organs are going to be vestigial because they really serve no useful function. There's no need for that mold to be able to see underground. We also have vestigial organs as well. So one of those vestigial organs is your wisdom teeth. They serve no useful function except to cause you great pain whenever they erupt in your gum line. Your appendix. No useful function, except that whenever it bursts, you need to be able to remove that. Uh, otherwise, you may possibly die. And then your tailbone. So your tailbone serves no useful purpose except for some type of idea of evolutionary history. So whenever we're thinking about how we're related to all different organisms, we have this nice little tree of life. So we have our ancestor, this protista. That protista basically specialized in all different ways because of different environmental pressures. So those environmental pressures caused these organisms to want to differentiate. So ultimately, we have arthropods, we have your animals that have backbones, we have earthworms, so on and so forth. So this is not our nice little tree of life. So how do we classify different organisms? Well, we use taxons, and taxons are categories that replace related organisms together based off of some type of similarity. So in terms of hierarchies, so we have the broadest when we have the most specific groups of organisms. So your domain is your broadest taxon. Okay, it's going to contain the most organisms, whereas species is the most specific. It may contain only one type of organism. So here's a visualization. So in this case, the domain is going to be at the very top, and it's going to contain the most organisms. It's going to be the one that has the broadest structure. So one of the domains is going to be eukarya. So in this case, those organisms that are eukaryotes. Now, in terms of species, so these are going to be individuals that are most specific. So they are going to be organisms that are very, very specialized. So they, only can, they may only contain one, or, one type of organism. So let's do an example. By the way, here is a mnemonic device on a way to remember the taxonomic groups. So kings play cards on fat green stools refers to kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. So if we're looking at a grizzly bear, your kingdom animalia is going to contain those organisms that are animals. So all these organisms are animals. However, 
If we look at the next group, your chordata, that includes animals with backbones, so it eliminates the sea star. Your mammalia is going to include all organisms that are mammals, so it eliminates the snake. Your carnivora is going to eliminate the squirrel, so these are going to be your meat eaters. Ursidae are going to include individuals that have bear-like features, so that eliminates the fox. Your ursus is going to be a more specialized type of bear, and then your ursus arctus is going to be your grizzly bear. So you can see that it goes from very, very broad to very, very specific. We can also do that for humans as well. And this is also what you're going to be doing as a project this week. So you're going to choose an organism, not a bear or not a human, and you're going to come up with its taxonomic categories. So we have your domain eukarya, which are going to be your eukaryotes. We are animals. We do have a backbone. We are mammals. We do come from primates. Uh, we do come from the family hominidae and then the genus Homo and Homo sapiens. So we actually only have one type of organism. We are the only type of organism within our own species. And then this here is your phylogenetic tree. So what you're going to note about this phylogenetic tree is that we're going to be at the very, very top. And the reason why is because that's going to be the one that's the most recent. As you go further down, it's going to be the ones that are the most primitive, or in other words, the oldest ones. So we have Homo sapiens, and then we have all different types of other hominids. So we're looking at the family hominidae. And so what you're going to do is you're going to include all different types of groups from your organism. So in this case, we have the Homo sapiens, the Neanderthals, Homo erectus, Homo habilis, so on and so forth. And so this gives us a evolutionary history of where we came from. So Australopithecus afarensis is going to be our oldest fossil that we have. Alrighty, guys, if you have any questions about evolution and about your project, uh, please find me on Teams. Thanks, guys.